The Sullivan and Sons Sawmill in Sparta was a true family business. Ten family members working side by side every day. And my mom even brought a basket lunch to work every day and we all eat lunch together at work. Terry Sullivan was one of those Sullivan sons. His life was routine until he was shot in the back of the head at his kitchen table eating dinner in 2009. So whoever did it most likely knew Terry, um, most likely was led into the house because there's no sign of forced entry. Nothing was taken, no any anything like that. Um, and he was shot probably right after getting home uh, while sitting down at his table eating dinner. It was awful. What happened next was just strange. And we actually got a telephone call from the police telling us that he had had a, uh, an accident, um, choked on a piece of chicken, fallen down, hit his head, and died in his kitchen as a choking accident. The family says Terry's wife, Cheryl Sullivan, repeated the same story to the family. And she came to the house and told every single person in that house that same story about my uncle choking and falling down and hitting his head after she had been interviewed for 12 hours about the murder. Obviously, there's a big difference between being shot in the head and choking on chicken. How did that story materialize? Hard to say. The family was only allowed to listen to the 911 tape once, and then the TBI sealed it as evidence. What they say they heard was an off-duty police officer who appeared to be treating everything like an accident, and you could hear people coming and going throughout the call. Why was he giving instructions to the paramedics? Why was he telling them that the body looked like he had obviously choked and nothing had happened? Why are they traipsing all over a crime scene? Why did they not secure the crime scene? There's a lot of questions to be asked there. This, of course, may have compromised the murder scene. It certainly didn't help. The signs around the county tell you this is a cold case, an unsolved murder. But unlike other cold cases, the family says they have a stunning piece of evidence. A $1 million life insurance policy taken out for Terry Sullivan with his signature forged on the document. That entire policy and every single signature location except one has someone else's signature. It does have his signature on one page. Uh, that page is the one that's the paramedical exam. It doesn't tell on that page what the policy is for. It doesn't tell the cat, it doesn't tell the face value. It doesn't tell anything about it other than it's a paramedical exam on that page. Every other signature page has someone else's signature on it. So he had no idea what he was signing, the best I can tell. Look for yourself. This is his signature on his will. This is his signature on this life insurance policy. It has to do with the way that he drew, he draws his T's and the way that his letters slant because of him being left-handed. Um, the person who knows how he writes better than anyone in the world would be my mother because she helped teach him to write because he's dyslexic. Look at the T from other Sullivan signatures compared to the T on the life insurance policy. That's his signature. That's his signature. Those are not his signature, and these were on a life insurance policy. Look at the S's, always narrow figure eights, but not on the life insurance policy. Look at the slant of the letters. Hey, we've got stacks of copies of his signature. It's always the same. And on that insurance policy, only one of them is his signature. The rest of them, the slant of the letters is wrong. The way that the T's are drawn is wrong. The, the way that the S's is drawn are wrong. They, they, don't even, they don't even look like they could be his signature. They don't look, there's no, no resemblance. We asked nationally known detective Sheila Wysocki and her team of investigators to review the case. She says she just can't get past the insurance policy. And get somebody in there that's a handwriting expert. There are plenty in the country. And bring them in and say, what pattern does this follow? Where do, does it match this person or this person? Talk to the insurance agent. When did we get it? How did you get it? And the initial report of choking on a piece of chicken after being shot in the head? For Waisaki, there are no words. But do you think that it is fair to say that being shot in the head and choking on a piece of chicken, that that scene would look dramatically different, those two scenes? It would, and a moron would have to think otherwise. There's blood spatter. There's, if you're choking, you're not gonna have blood all over. And if there isn't blood all over and you have a bullet in your head, 
Did, you, did somebody clean it up? What happened? The family says District Attorney Bryant Dunaway and the TBI have ignored the problems with the life insurance policy, ignored this possible evidence that provides a possible motive. Well, most of the time we feel like we're being ignored because we plead and plead and try to get things done and we don't really have anybody that's listening and trying to do anything for us. Hey y'all, Sunshine 1979. So this is Terry Sullivan. He is part of our What the Hell is Going On in Tennessee series. A interview and the information stored in that video pretty much tells you the the full story. We have corruption on the murder scene from police. The police officer was also um, indicted for serving negative subpoenas, fake subpoenas to people that had posted negatively about him. That would be Officer Dale Dotson of the Sparta Police. The TBI then took over this case and they are now the lead investigators. This is an open investigation. However, seems pretty closed book to me. The wife clearly was involved and okay with telling the family a complete and total lie about the cause of death. So, as always, guys, remember, it takes a village to raise a child. You see something, say something. Become a voice. Join the army for the voices.